Well, I have to start by saying that I really find it uh, depressing and almost embarrassing to be back in this uh, time frame of commenting on this quadrennial farce that Americans call an election process. It really is. It really is terrible, and it's. Uh, what the Iowa debacle shows to the world is that uh, there is no limit to the hypocrisy in the American consciousness of the American ruling class when it comes to accusing everyone else of having uh, rigged elections, uh, a bit bad systems, not democracy, et cetera, et cetera. And this, the, 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 this latest twist uh, of Sanders... You know, there being a neck-and-neck neck battle for New Hampshire, which is tomorrow's, is um, just the latest stint in this, this show, which is all about stopping Sanders. There's only one story in this whole election cycle, and that is stopping Sanders. The Democrat Party has been working on it for not just the last four years, but the very idea going back to 1980 the Democratic Leadership Council, what they always want is just a new neoliberal with a twist, fresh young face. You know, for Obama, it was gay. I mean, sorry, yeah. Obama was a black uh, one. The, this Mayor Pete is the gay one. And that's how that is uh, new and fresh enough for the Democrats, as long as you never say anything about class. Or, or actually threaten the status quo in any any real way. Uh, it, it really is it's designed um, to just create this narrative. It's this they're, they're making they're making it up out of whole cloth that there's, there's, there's no results. You know, they, 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 this is 2020. Everyone has a cell phone, everyone has. They had results, but they relied on this app. That uh, that was uh, like a DNC front group called uh, what, Stealth or Shadow, some some creepy name, um, and they're 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 hiding the fact that there's no this is an oligarchy, and the way the parties pick their um, their nominee, not only do they come up with something that is basically two identical candidates, but the, the, the process is, is repulsive. It's completely opaque. And um, the, 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 the threat, the real threat, or what they perceive as a threat, is this idea of uh, Sanders. And Sanders supporters call him the, um, a movement politician. I, I, I reject that because I don't think that the U.S. Uh, voting populace has enough of a developed political consciousness to spawn a movement politician, but I would, I would say he's a moment politician. As, um, as terrible as he is, especially on foreign policy, he has c captured this moment on all these issues that he has been working on for decades. And at a time when people are very, very angry, Trump exploited it as a, a faux populism that was based on, you know, uh, partly on his uh, racial xenophobic uh, uh, appeal. But there is a popular anger. People are unbelievably angry in this country. And they're angry. They, they're not, they don't yet understand imperialism, and they don't really, they, they've been, you know, bred not to ask questions about the wider picture. But they know that when someone tells them, uh, that the economy is going well, they look around and they say, what are you talking about? And you can talk. These are normal people who know what, you know, you, the, 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 the statisticians can say, oh, well, the, the U.S. created 225,000 jobs in January, and some poor schmuck in the pub who's sharing a drink with you will say, yeah, I know there are a lot of jobs. I have three of them. <laughs> the question is, why does it take three or four jobs to equal a living that you used to be able to do on one job? And what um, the 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 thing is that the sad part is that Sanders is anything but 
a an anti-imperialist, especially on foreign policy. The way he speaks about Iran, about uh, Syria, Venezuela, Russia, you know, he comes down full force on the wrong side of history. And it, it's absolutely terrible. Um, but that said, he, he does reach into this anger in the... Um, the vast majority of Americans who are living paycheck to paycheck, who are scared about tomorrow, scared about health care, scared about their, the, the safety of their children, they're scared about uh, the future for the, for the uh, job market, they're, they're scared about education and costs and money and working all the time, not being able to retire. Um, and what I think is that this idea is is powerful, and it, if it were allowed to continue, it would have a um, a, a a solid chance of beating Trump. It would beat anybody. The people united, you know. But the the Democrats are determined to divide people on along all lines but class, so that they keep this uh, this non discussion. Um, and I think even from, from the um, uh, perspective of, of the left, I think it is a reasonable – I'm not a, a Sanders supporter, but I think it's reasonable to try to organize on the outskirts of this, of this moment. I think it's silly not to engage when people – this is like the Super Bowl. People are talking about this. So why not join the conversation? It's a chance for a thousand conversations, millions of conversations, where you can talk to someone who ordinarily would not be able to discuss anything like this and say, what do you mean? What's wrong with universal health care? The whole, the whole world has universal health care. What's wrong with universal free education? The entire developed world has this. What's wrong with questioning the idea that billionaires have to be restricted in what they can say and buy and do? And the ability to have that is exceedingly rare. What foreigners don't realize is how terrible the, 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 the system is in this country in terms of restricting thought. And um, they constantly use the word autocrat or authoritarian to describe, you know, um, Iran, uh, Russia, uh, any, any place that they don't like and then um, say it's not democratic and this and this. Not only do they have, the, you know, crappy non-democratic elections here where it's just about how, how much power rich people can buy, but the, the atmosphere – here is so scared there is but there's you know there's no secret police well of course there is but they're not sitting in 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 the bar listening to your conversation everybody is their own censor it's shocking and foreigners are constantly shocked the range of things that are just off the table that you cannot discuss in american society and because it's kind of self-imposed or kind of, uh, you know, uh, purchased, the idea of manufactured consent, um, people think that it's, they're free. And um, so <laughs> the, the Democratic National Committee, the, the Leadership Council, the GOP, the deep state, all the powers that be, the oligarchs, are absolutely petrified, scared to death of these conversations taking place. And they are the key to getting rid of, of the U.S. empire, of, uh, uh, of uh, not only Trump, but in the long term, beyond Trump. The, the, um, the forever wars, the permanent war machine, the oppression against uh, uh, black and brown people at home and abroad. All of this has to start with those conversations, and um, Americans just are not allowed to participate in them. So we have to fight for the very idea of, of talking, which is kind of strange.